we're making a we'll make a, a fairly dramatic turn now in the class. We were talking first some strategic issues, then we talked about planning, and we talked only a little bit about planning issues. Um, chapter ten is still considered planning, but it's really taken us into management again. And don't worry about the definitions of management and budget planning. That's not important. But we're kind of turning towards master budgeting, which is what we'll talk about today. We'll skip a bunch of chapters, and then we're going to get into flexible budgeting. Um, so the whole budget and variance analysis. Now, how many of you came into this program having worked at a relatively large company before? Have any of you ever been involved in a budget cycle? You have been. How long did that budget cycle last? The entire year. The entire year. That, you know, that's probably on the high end, but yes, it could. The budget cycle could last an entire year. It's not like a one-day thing. Um, any other comments on budget cycles they've been involved in? My history um, in both. Um, two different companies that I was, you know, intimately involved in the budget cycle. It's at least two months. It's a give and take and back and forth and arguments and, you know, trying to position things and trying to, you know, do what's best for yourself. Um, but at least a two-month cycle uh, that can, could be as much as a year. And if you're on the revenue side, now I'm on the revenue side, when you're You'll all, many of you will be on the revenue side when you work at a, an accounting firm. You're the reason the company exists. You're helping to make money for the company. The, the partners are essentially the revenue centers, if you would. And their pressure, you know, they don't talk about it because you're sticking in accounting and don't want to think that's the pressure, is to sell as much as they can, <laughs> maximize sales. And the budget cycle is about trying to squeeze them to commit to a, a re relatively high sales level, the nature of the revenue side. On the cost side, and I was there at, at Goldman Sachs, the pressures are to squeeze you to get costs out of the, your budgets. You know, do you really need to do that project? Are you really doing this right? You know, get those budgets as tight as possible so you can, you know, help to create um, profit for the company. So whether you're on the revenue side or the cost side, you're going to feel, as you, you know, as you get more and more senior in the organization, you're going to feel the, the budget cycle. And the budgeting has um, impact in compensation, in, in the plans of the company. So it's an important, important process. Can't be under it. Should not be under it. So we'll talk about the roles of budget, budgeting, budgeting in the management process. We'll talk about what a master budget is and supporting schedules. We'll talk about uncertainty. Because obviously, the master budget is, is developed before the year begins. And you don't know everything. You're making some estimations. So there's uncertainty as to whether or not you'll meet that budget. Budgeting in service companies is important for us. Some alternative approaches to budgeting and behavioral considerations. Budgeting is an area with a lot of gaming that goes on. A lot of gaming. And you need to understand what some of those games are and you know, understand it's manageable. Okay, purposes of budgeting. First of all, a budget is a detailed plan expressed in quantitative terms that specifies how resources will be acquired and used during a specified period of time. You know, it could be, you know, there's always an annual budget, there's usually a monthly budget, a quarterly budget. Um, so how will you use your resources? The verb of budgeting is the process of preparing them. Budgets are used for a variety of management purposes. It's used in planning. If you're in an IT department, which is where um, 
you know, you're on the cost side, based upon your budget, it tells you what projects you can do next year, right? Certain things you have to do, like keep the current systems running, and you have some extra money, and what are you going to do with that extra money? It facilitates communication. When the budgets are done, everyone knows that. And so if you're on the cost side and your budgets were tightened and you have end users on the revenue side who have high expectations, they need to understand that you may not have budget to do the things they want to do. It allows you to allocate your resources, again, based upon what you're going to accomplish. And this is what, you know, by staying within budget, allows you to control your profit. And ultimately, you, you incent people based upon what their budget is going to be. As always, budgeting starts with strategy. You have long range plans that drive your operational decisions. Um, you have operational budgets, but you also have capital budgets. Um, capital budgets say, how are we going to um, expend our long-term dollars so we can build a new factory because our other budgets say we need to. And so budgets should and must reflect the strategy. Goals, strategic goals, you have objectives, you have a long term plan. That long term plan drives short term plans and capital budgets. Those short term plans result in your annual master budget, which occurs before the year begins. Um, you then have some controls coming off your budget to make sure that operations does the things that are budgeted. Those budgets could change over the year, they, they could be rolling budget. And what we'll talk about in chapter 14, so I ended, added it here, are things called flexible budgets. Where a master budget occurs before a period, a flexible budget occurs after the result. We're going to focus today mainly on master budgets and next period. And you'll see that you develop a master budget if it's somewhat of a bottom-up approach. A master budget would be corporate-wide. You need to develop it kind of within each responsibility center, cost center, um, um, investment center. Are those terms you've heard before? Cost centers and investment centers. Okay, I don't want to get too far into that today. A cost center is like an IT department that all they're going to be judged on is how much it costs. A revenue center is like a partner in an accounting firm. They're going to be judged on um, how much they earn for the firm, how much sales they make. And an investment center is a level above. It's cost and revenues together. That would be like a senior manager would be have cost and revenue components together. Okay, so you have to do that um, from a bottom-up approach. Budgets work best from a bottom-up approach. Um, the way you develop a master budget is by driving it off of what your expectations are for sales. Therefore, from sales, you, you figure out what your production levels need to be. And then from your production levels, you figure out how much materials and labor, et cetera, you need to buy. And that's how you drive a budget. So you start it off with what do we expect to sell. Across all our budgets. And that would be true for a service industry as well as the manufacturing industry, obviously materials is less important to service. Labor and labor would be more important in the service industry. So the, the master budget, once it's completed, reflects the brand plan. You then, it, it translates your objectives into action steps, you're able to create your pro forma financials from that master budget, you can 
communicate to your employees the expectations from that budget, and you coordinate all your activities. And it has both operating budgets and financial budgets. And we'll focus primarily on operating budgets here. Every company has a budget committee of senior executives that are overseeing the budgeting process. Generally, you're going to budget a year. You might also budget quarters and periods, quarters and months. A rolling budget, which it sounds like you know, some company back there did, is continuously changed. Generally, you'll have rolling budgets as, as you see what's happening with sales. You would change your sales expectations for the year. You can't, beginning of the year, you can't possibly know a certain what the sales will be for the year. You would, you would use these rolling budgets to reestablish your expected sales levels going forward as the year starts to unfold. And so you constantly have a 12-month budget. So when January is over, you then add the next January in. You, you might rejigger February through December and you have a constant 12-month budget on a rolling basis. That's, that's a rolling budget. And budgeting, as I said, starts at a detailed level and rolls its way up. You would, we'll talk about it later, but you would want your budgets to be participative. A budget that comes down from above is a difficult budget to meet. But that happens as well. I mean, a lot of companies make you feel like you're participating in the budget process, but ultimately you're told what you're asking for a lot of people. Okay. And here's the master budget. Uh, starts with the sales budget. You need to know how much you're going to sell. That drives your production budget, which drives your budget, cost of goods sold. You're able to do income statements, and then from those income statements, you're able to look at your balance sheet going forward. Okay, I'm going to take a break here.